Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 244. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, Cat Dog Joe has dug up DOS games backslash board backslash bat check. I guess we're going to be looking for bats, maybe battles, maybe a lot of files. Um, let's see here. We've got a lot of doc files for some reason, some of which are named Asbestos, Bazooka, Critter. Huh. And we got a read meet up first. We got a couple executables from the looks of it. Hmm, not quite sure what's going on here. Um, there's a start.bat, I wonder what that actually has in it. So that just runs title.exe there. There is a readme.first, so I guess let's check that out. Readme.first. Let's see what we got here. Special notes for combat checkers. <laughs> okay. I don't know where that bat comes into play, but the second version of Combat Checkers, first version did not have a one-player option. Only one copy of this version was ever distributed, and it was subsequently tracked down and obliterated. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> the instructions for the game do not describe the difference between the computer playing on normal mode versus killer mode. <laughs> well, they that difference for difficulty levels. Normal and killer. For the benefit of the player, the differences are described in this text files. <laughs> okay, special note, if you enter data into the program in an incorrect format, you will get a redo from start error. Do not panic. Simply re-enter the data correctly, and the game will continue where it left off. In other words, the author wrote this in BASIC and didn't know how to accommodate that kind of a situation. Because, yeah, that's a general BASIC error. That has nothing to do with the author. Well, everything to do with the author just using the built-in BASIC stuff and not working around that. But anyways, I guess we'll just run start. <laughs> ah! Okay, that that was a title sequence. <laughs> I, it was a title sequence. Okay, um... So we got speed index, register. Oh, this guy wanted this to be registered. Apparently a Thomas Anders. Name sounds familiar. Might have seen it before. And what's he asking for for registration? $10. Thank you for registering. Please enjoy the program. Right. So what do the instructions say? Combat checkered is pl ch checkered? <laughs> combat checkers is played under the same rules as regular American checkers. However, combat checkers has a twist in that the checkers are armed and have special abilities and armor. <laughs> okay then. Okay, so reading the instructions here, it seems as though the trick with combat checkers here is that it plays like normal checkers, except you fire your weapons at your piece, like each different piece has like different stats and everything, and they fire their weapons when they jump pieces. And then that determines whether or not the piece they jumped is removed from the board. Yeah, so I'm starting to see some of those things that were noted in those doc files, but then why were they doc files? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Unless the guy was using DOC to represent some other kind of format that he came up with himself. Like, it's always possible. Anyways, let's play the game. So, play a new game. You want to play a one-player game versus the computer in normal mode. Please enter your name, and please enter the name of the computer opponent. Load a pre-made checker set, create your own checker set, or go back to play game menu. Um, what happens if we go to load? Um, well, apparently we don't have any custom ones, so we'll just load the standard. And then... Okay, is Oh wait, this is for the computer now, so I guess computer can load standard as well. Okay, so we got our pieces. Um, okay, I'm guessing those are robots and humans just from the looks of it. So right away, one thing I'm not too keen on is the fact that the only way to tell the difference between whose pieces are whose is the direction they're facing. Like, it'd be nice if there was like different colors for some of these, depending on who they belong to. 
Now apparently we have an I command so that we can in investigate a piece. It wants, us to it wants us to actually punch in the specific spot. So like say three comma one. Apparently that's a robot with 10 life remaining, a Nova Blaster plasma rifle, chain mail, and a bulletproof vest. Okay. Okay, so let's move a piece. So enter the row comma column of the piece you want. So I'm gonna say row seven, seven comma three, and move to the square you want, which would be six, four, I believe. Okay. So what next? Um, let's go straight for an offensive move here. So let's do, uh, all right, move. This is kind of clunky having to type in the numbers manually like this. So three, three, two, two, four. Okay, that was a good counter. Um, let's do another move. Let's do uh, four, two to three, three. Must be a jump. What? Oh. Okay, I see. So we are playing by the particular checker rules where if you ha can jump a piece, you must jump a piece. Okay, then. So we'll move two, four, two. Uh, I guess that's going to four, six. And then apparently we're getting attacks in. And. Okay, the computer's getting attacks against ours. Oh, the computer actually got a couple jumps there because kind of messed up my positioning. Okay, so let's do seven, three, two. Oh wait, that's the that's the enemy's piece. Whoops. Uh, let's do. Well, we have to jump that piece. So let's do uh, eight, two, two. Uh, goes to six, four. Oh, that one actually had a different weapon. <laughs> Okay then. Okay, so I'm trying to set up a nice defensive play here. So I'm gonna go from two two to one three. Okay, so I don't think anyone's got any jumps that they have to make at the moment. Not yet anyways. So yeah, so far this is playing pretty much just like checkers, except that there's just weird pieces and everything. I'm guessing that you probably have to really dive into the game's mechan- like, other mechanics, like its different piece types and weapons and everything, to really, like, to really get it the feel for how things can be different. Because so far, every time a piece has jumped a piece, it's destroyed something in the process, so... And this is actually kind of a bad situation, because... As it stands, I'm pretty much going to have to be the one who makes the first the first offensive play here, and that's not good. <laughs> Cuz this is not this is not set up well for that. In fact, yeah, I'm pretty much any move I make at this point, I pretty much I'm giving him two moves to to take my pieces. So, ugh. so yeah, so that was combat checkers. It's playing pr it's playing pretty much as I expected. Um, I guess if you really fancy, like, a different kind of checkers, like, this is definitely different, but <laughs> the computer's about to, the computer's beating, beating me up here. Like, I don't have any really decent moves. Like, if I do this, he's gonna, he's about to attack two of them. Yeah. But yeah, combat checkers. Just a, a different take on checkers. It's not bad, but I would have preferred it if you actually could see like different colors on the pieces, just to make things a little easier. Next up, we have a team dig from Anthony and Kobu Retro. DOS games backslash arcade three backslash S Raiders. I'm gonna get something like Space Raiders or Star Raiders. All I've got is an executable. So Raiders, Star Raiders by Pope Lou Duchez. Okay, so instructions. Um, oh, got a lot of instructions here. A uh, mission, to defend your three star bases and yourself against a fleet of marauding, 
mar marauding bad guys. <laughs> you are the only defender piloting a fighter with warp capability, long and short range scanners, and locking torpedoes. The fleet starts a good distance off, but moves ever closer as the game goes on. Destroy the bad guys ship by ship, sector by sector, before they can plow through your star bases. So this almost seems like it would be like one of those old Star Trek type games. Especially given that we've got like long and short range scanners and stuff, apparently. I don't know. Oh wait, that's not what I was expecting. Um, as mentioned, you are a fighter pilot. The game is played from first person perspective. Okay, so we have a first person Star Trek type battle simulation thing. Maybe. I don't know yet. So the game is designed to be played one-handed. Imagine your ship were controlled via an aviator's joystick. While pushing forward, the up arrow makes you nosedive, pulling back down makes you arc up. Okay, so plane controls. Combinations of keys are okay. You can use... Arc. Okay, so it's saying that you can actually hold multiple keys at the same time. And that you can also use the diagonal keys on the keypad. By the way, you do not need to set numlock one way or the other. The program just looks at which keys were pressed and not the characters that are generated. <laughs> In other words, we're aware of the fact that people tend to do that with their games, and we're not going to be like that. <laughs> of course, since you are looking out the cockpit, everything else seems to be doing the moving, and the opposite of the above. This almost seems like it's over-explained. Maybe not. Actually, reading through these instructions here, it almost seems more like um, Star Voyager. I don't know if anybody's heard of that one, or if I've even got the right name there, but I'm thinking back to an old NES game where you basically had to go to different sectors and destroy enemies and stuff, and it was done from a first-person view. I think it was called Star Voyager. I'll put a correction on the screen if I was wrong about that. But um, And apparently the game's actually freeware, except the guy's saying that if you send him $15, he'll keep your name on file and let you know when you, new stuff is made and send it to you. So, interesting. So, game parameters. Seconds for enemy fleet to move, 80. Max number of enemies per sector, 6. Okay. So, I guess, play game. Okay. So, what's happening? Um, well, it kind of looks like we're in CGA graphics at the moment. I'm not actually seeing anything, though. Um, oh, things are working. That was a torpedo I just fired. Okay, so delete key accesses our star map here. So I guess this is where we are. So if I wanted to warp to, say, here, do I hit... Okay, there we go. So that's our warp effect. Okay, so we gotta pull an enemy up into view. We gotta make sure that we don't get hit by its shots. And there we go, we got the enemy. I'm not hearing any sound effects though. Um, okay, so let's go to a sector with two enemies. See if we can handle that. Okay, so the trick is, if the crosshair turns purple, then your torpedoes will lock onto a target so that you don't have to worry about it missing. Yeah, see? And I think we already got the enemies there. Oh, I just noticed the enemies are moving towards the star bases. That's probably not a good thing. <laughs> um, so let's continue warping so I can continue blowing some of these enemies up. Okay, so we got some more enemies here. Okay, got that one. And then we got an enemy up here. And apparently they they can't actually hit you unless... Okay, they can't actually hit you unless they're on screen. So let's actually do a sector with four enemies, see if we can handle that. And yeah, there doesn't seem to be any sound effects in the game. Okay, so that one was easy to lock onto. You got that one as well. So, so far the game seems to play okay. Um, not a very high frame rate. And I think we are taking the occasional bit of damage, but we do have shields going. So, 
Or maybe we've been hit? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> Um, I think I got hit by an enemy or something because I have no view or anything anymore. <laughs> so I think I need to go to a star base to repair because I saw one of the symbols at the bottom kind of disappeared. So if I go to a star base, oh, I actually have to, um, okay, there we go. So I lock into the star base and now I'm repaired. Cool. So let's go deal with this sector again. So yeah, the M, the T, and the S there sort of stand for the different um, systems that I have. And I have to keep them working, otherwise, well, <laughs> bad things happen. So yeah, so far this actually plays pretty okay. Like it's very basic and there's no sound effects, but you know, it's still works. And yeah, it really does feel like Star Voyager. And again, that's uh, presuming I've got the name of that game right. <laughs> but anyways, here's a sector with five enemies. I thought there were six in here. Maybe one of them moved. And yeah, we definitely got a shield system protecting us to some degree. Although it'd be nice if I, it was a little more um, obvious, like what the shields are doing. See, I'm not going to play through the rest of this, but I think you get a general idea of what's going on here. It's basically a shoot everything on a screen and keep moving to different sectors thing. If I recall, games like this were actually not that uncommon in the early 80s. Because I think there were a bunch of them, mostly on, um, mostly on the Intellivision and ColecoVision. Because those were co game consoles that actually had like numeric keypads with their controllers. That way you could actually have like complex functions and everything. I think there was also a similar game on the Atari 2600 that used like the keypad for that kind of stuff, but the Atari 2600 didn't normally have a keypad. That was something you had to buy separate. So yeah, all things considered, this game plays perfectly fine. It's low frame rate. It's free. Um, yeah, not really too much more to say about it. And our last dig from Yarmo Ranta is DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash twist 101. Probably going to be called Twister if I had to guess, but we're going to find out in a second here. Um, I guess all we have to go on here is a doc file, so edit twist.doc. Okay, not Twister, but a twist of fate. Done with the um, special ASCII characters to give it a more interesting blocky look there. Fast, action-packed, race against time, where the object is not to kill, but to survive. Ooh. Made in 1991 by the Two Bens Programming Group. And apparently this is unregistered, shareware release 1.01. And apparently we've also got a Benjamin Allman. Okay. And apparently the registration fee for this game is $16. So, as the story goes, a very long time ago, in a distant galaxy, lived a man. People usually like to call him Ben, because that was his name. Ben always used his computer to design and write interesting games. But one day, a very strange thing happened. He had just finished working on a game called Wastoid, when a freak lightning storm sent a massive power surge into his computer, permanently melting his brain into the ancient PCXT clone he was working with. Ever since that day, Ben has been trapped inside this game as a yellow bar of light by that cruel, horrific twist of fate. Okay. And I should note here that one of the credits is for original concept and design is the guy's cat. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so a twist of fate is quite simple to play, really. You try to maneuver your nearly helpless little light beam around the playing field until the computer's light beam or your light beam is trapped in such a way that it just can't move anymore. Then once that happens, the trap player's light beam explodes and he loses. Okay. Winner goes on to win millions of dollars in prizes, and the loser, which more often than not is you, must continue playing until his parents or wife makes him go to bed. <laughs> okay then. And apparently we've got game speeds from 0 to 9, 0 being slow, 9 being fast. And okay, you control with the arrow keys and spacebar. And apparently what the spacebar does if just pause the game? Wait, what? <laughs> While playing the spacebar or joystick button pauses the game. 
and F1 pops up a little help screen. F9 toggle sound. Yeah, so I really don't have a lot to go on here, so I guess we might as well just go play it. So, twist. Okay, so we've got our registration screen. A twist of fate. This is going pretty fast. I'm like, that might be intentional, how fast it's going around there, but we'll see. So using a joystick, nope. So, okay, we got our controls there. So, yeah, um, okay. Oh, we have to select the game speed. Well, the default is five. Let's see what five is like. Um, it's still not moving. Okay, the game is apparently on and doing stuff, but nothing's... I, I can't get this to do anything. I can't even quit. But yet it's still technically doing something because that Twist of Faith ticker at the top is changing between, like, the copyright and the name of the game. Okay, so I was testing some stuff just now, and yes, it is a cycles count thing. So if the cycles is too fast, then it won't run properly. Oh geez, even this is... <laughs> I turned the cycles down! Because uh. here's the thing, I turned it like really low and it started working properly. So I turned it up, but it seemed like too slow. So I turned it up just a little, and now it's not working again. <laughs> Holy jeez. Okay, so I've turned the cycles count way the heck down. Like, I mean, look at how l slowly that line is moving now. But, like, I mean, I have to. Like, just a little bit higher, and this moves, like, stupid fast and doesn't work properly. So, there's some really weird things going on with the timer in this game. Anyways, so, speed 5. Let's go with speed 5. Okay, and there we go. We're finally playing. And yeah, it's basically a Tron clone. And the computer already screwed itself. <laughs> well, that kind of happens. So you've won. Current score, 176. Games played, 1. Okay. So go again. And there we go. Computer ran into a wall. So... There we go. Now the computer's screwed. Well, maybe not. Computer does have an out there. Uh, no, now the computer's screwed because he kind of put himself into his own situation there. Although it's kind of a big one, so it might take him a moment. And there he goes. So yeah, this is basically just Tron light cycles but in text mode. Yeah, like, I mean, I could turn the speed up. Let's see how fast speed 8 is. Well, it's actually not that much faster, and the computer just completely screwed himself over. I didn't even have to go near him. <laughs> uh, oh, we actually have different levels? What? Okay, that time I messed up. Because <laughs> I wasn't even looking properly. I was just surprised by the fact that there was actually a different layout. Although, I wonder why the guy's calling it a twist of fate. Because, like, I mean, it's literally just like a Snakes game or a Nibbles game or, again, Tron Light Cycles. And yeah, we seem to be stuck on this board now. Like, I wonder how it decides when to change the board up. I don't know. Okay, that time I think you legitimately caught me. <laughs> But then I do have to speed up, so it's a little harder to play it at the... Oh yeah, and we're on a completely different level now. Like, how's it deciding when to change the level? This is weird. So yeah, that was a twist of fate. A fairly simple Tron Light Cycles type game, but at least it has different levels in it, even though you can't really choose them. Not directly, anyways. And I seem to have a talent for running into the narrow side of the walls. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing nothing terrible about it. I guess the question is, is it worth $16? Like, probably not, but, you know, it does work once you get past the very temperamental timer thing. I guess if you're running this on real hardware, turn the turbo off, or on, or 
however it works on your particular system. 